Hey guys, so I'm just going to continue kind of that same PowerPoint from the video previously. Um, we're going to talk about scapular movement. This should be a quick, um, we're just talking about uh, and appreciating the movements that our, our scapula contributes to the overall um, raising and um, movement of our shoulder, right? We'll, we'll talk about the shoulder complex. It's kind of like the umbrella term for all of the joints that contribute. So with our scapula, if you can imagine um, and use some of these pictures as it, its relation to the rib cage, right? So we have um, downward and upward rotation, right? So our upward rotation is when we, um, if this is, this is our rib cage and this is our scapula, when uh, we raise our arm, we have the scapula rotates up. Our hands are a good visualization for um, what the, the scapula looks like on the body, right? So we upwardly rotate. And then um, when we bring our arm back down, we rotate, rotate downwardly back to our neutral position. So this allows to the glenoid to make space and for us to um, uh, see the head of the humerus rotating up, right? It has to rotate together. Um, if it didn't rotate, then um, our clavicle, our acromion, it would all get in the way um, of that area, right? And uh, of the, it would get in the way of the humerus being able to rotate correctly. Okay, and then um, we have internal and external rotation. There's some different ways this can be looked at, um, but I like to refer to it as internal external rotation. So if these are our scapulas, it's the rotation, right, um, off of the thoracic wall. So um, when we go into uh, certain ranges, right, we rotate out to allow, again, more movement, um, better movement of the um, humeral head and the glenoid. So when we get to the top, there's a bit of uh, external rotation. And then when and we come back down, we go back into our internal rotation. And then um, our final motion is our posterior and anterior tilt. Right, so um, it, this is in relation to um, the, the um, thoracic cage, right? So we're, we're tilting this way, back and forth, and this will be more evident when you're looking at somebody's um, scapular movement. You'll see the winging, they might be getting too much uh, of the tilt. So paying attention to that when you're assessing and looking at um, scapular movement in your patients. So there are a couple videos on here, and I want you to go look at them. Uh, notice some of what's normal. Uh, let's see if I can play. I think we're going to have trouble playing it in this setting. But go back and look at them. You should be able to, once you put it in display mode, and look at the different ways the scapula can move, right? You're going to look for that inferior angle. If the inferior angle is pointing out at you, or there's a different level of depth than that inferior angle, then that's probably a dyskinesis. Um, if they don't move the same way, right? One goes a little earlier and moves a little farther, or um, you have uh, those differences in motion, differences, differences in our uh, thoracic spine musculature activation. You might see one muscle pop and the other one not. Um, or they might bilaterally have um, a, a, a bad movement pattern. The first video you're going to see is going to focus mainly on um, what good motion looks like, right? And then the second video shows you dyskinesis. So I just want you to watch it, rewatch it a couple times and think about what the differences really are and kind of work through your head um, what that dyskinesis looks like. So if you guys have any questions about this, uh, please let me know. Um, the following video will be, uh, we'll be looking at immobilization and taping and wrapping and I hope to kind of explain that for you guys. All right, thanks.